All right. Hey guys, I am super, super excited. I got a package in from Shining 3D. I've been waiting for this. This is the new 3D scanner, the Vega. It's their portable 3D scanner. And in this video, we are going to do the unboxing, uh, go over some specs and do a test scan. So let's go. Okay, so the case is very similar to the Einstar case. Put that here. Underneath the case, we have uh i think this is a mount oh no this is for the calibration plate i'm pretty sure yeah a little model that you could use to scan so maybe we'll use that as their test model and then for north america there is a usb-c um power adapter and a very nice looking um wrist lanyard to hold onto the scanner scanner a tripod head mount that swivels, looks like 360. In the main case here. Uh, same case as the Einstar. We have in the first pocket here, tracking dots. Oh, interesting. There are smaller ones uh, and the larger ones there. A little packing list of what's in here the calibration plate and it appears to be very similar to the Einstar one, but the tracking dots are a different layout. All right. In the main compartment, we have a small little tripod. That's really nice. Oh yeah, they do extend out a little bit. Very neat. Okay. A USB-C to USB-C, and here we go. Ooh, it's got some heft to it. Oh, here we go, here we go. Ah, oh, it's got this nice rubber case. <sighs> Look at that. How many cameras do we see here? We got one, two, three, four, five, and these look like um, infrared bulbs, maybe? Or maybe that's a six camera there. So I'm gonna have to read up on seeing how many cameras there are, but this feels good. It's got some weight to it. So that's it. This is what we have in the box. Um, we're gonna charge this up and we're gonna do a test scan. So excited. Before jumping into the scan, when you first start up the Vega and connect to the internet, you'll be prompted with a new version update. I highly recommend doing the update as there will also be improvements. While the scanner is updating, you get a nice tutorial on how to scan and navigate the scanner UI. Once the update was done, I also thought it was best to start with the calibration. To access the calibration and settings, you swipe down from the top edge, select calibration, and follow the on-screen tutorial. The calibration starts with the HD cameras and using the calibration plate with the smaller dots, starting with calibrating the plate flat on the table, followed by positioning the plate on the stand at different angles. The calibration involves keeping the target centered in the blue circle on the screen, gradually and slowly lifting up till the blue circles disappear. It took some time getting used to keeping the scanner steady and not going too fast, but it's okay if you do as you can always lower the scanner to capture what you had missed. Once the HD side is calibrated, you flip the calibration plate over to calibrate the fast scanning cameras. Calibration is suggested to be done every seven days. Here are some tips that may help you. When calibrating the fast scan side, I needed to lift the scanner quite high, so it will be easier to do this on a table that is lower down than my standing workbench. Also, make sure to calibrate on a flat surface and try to keep the scanner parallel to that surface. With the update and calibration done, we can do our first scan. The following clips are not sped up as I wanted to show actual speed of the scan. The turntable being used is something I have created, but you can use any kind of Lazy Susan to make scanning small objects easier. As this scans, I wanted to talk about some stats and info on the scanner. The Vega is basically two scanners in one, taking advantage of two types of scanning technologies, VCSEL and MEMS, for long and short range scanning. 
The fast mode for scanning medium to large objects gives us a point distance of 0.5 millimeters to 10 millimeters at a scanning distance of 250 to 1500 millimeters at 20 frames per second. The HD mode for scanning small to medium objects gives us a 0.05 millimeter to 3 millimeter point distance with a scanning distance of 100 to 250 millimeters at 15 frames per second. So the system is completely wireless, being able to scan and process out files all on the device. So storage is important here and has a 32 gigabyte of eMMC and a 512 gigabyte SSD. Shining 3D did have the foresight to allow the scanner to be used while being charged the wall adapter or a portable battery pack. From my brief testing, I was able to make three HD scans and processing files and poking around the system settings and consuming around 20% power of the 5000 milliamp hour battery. A couple of more stats about the scanner. It has a 6.4 inch touchscreen and 32 gigs of RAM and comes in at 535 grams or one pound three ounces. In the following clips, I am actually navigating the UI for the first time and you can see that it's pretty intuitive. The scanning was quick with some default quick scan settings, but you can choose to change those settings. Here in the cropping, there are a couple of selection tools you could choose to use as well as ways to modify the selections on the bottom. The processing of the files and applying the crops is actually really fast on the device. There is some waiting between cropping and processing out the files, but pleasantly surprised at how much faster it was than what I was used to processing out files on my laptop with similar settings captured on my Einstar. My laptop is pretty high on build stats, so it seems like there's some kind of different algorithm working its magic in the background. Also on a design note, I really enjoy the glowing frame to show that it's processing. While this process is out, I will give my initial impressions at this point. The scanning experience has been the best I have used out of the box. I haven't once lost tracking or had any issues scanning the small statue. I turned the device on and it was ready to scan. The user interface has been super easy to navigate. I did need to poke around to familiarize myself with all the options, but otherwise very beginner friendly. The tools on the device currently are limited and not as robust as the desktop software we are used to in the past, but you can process out water type models or export out your point clouds. One thing I noticed that you can't do is scan multiple angles of an object and align and combine on the device. It can only be done on the dedicated Star Vision software, which we will get into. Here you can see the scan quality compared to the original. I'm pretty happy with the results with just one pass at the default HD setting. Also note that this isn't even at max resolution, but at the 0.32 resolution, which is considered medium. So we should be able to get a bit more detail out of the scan. I did another HD scan of a hand plane from Bridge City Toolworks. It has really beautiful details and can be tricky to scan with the shiny surface and black parts. The scan was done rather quickly, but I wanted to focus on the knobs and see what details it can pick up in the threads. Overall, really impressed with the quality here. I could get a way cleaner scan if I captured it in multiple parts and aligning the model in the PC software. I did have to use ASAP scanning spray for the shiny and dark parts. I'll be working on another video that will be more in depth on fast scanning, but I still wanted to show something quick in this video and settled on scanning the dash of my car. I was curious on how well it would scan in bright sun as well as the dark interior. This scan was captured in about a minute and did have spots where data was not captured as well as it could be. These were errors on my part for moving too fast and not capturing enough information from different perspectives. Overall though, I am satisfied with the scan and actually took the opportunity to scan a portion of the center console and create a custom cup holder for my Nalgene bottles that has always been bugging me. There are two ways of exporting the files on the Vega. One is via the cloud, the other is to connect it to a computer with the installed Star Vision app as I am doing so here. Star Vision is available on PC and Mac. At the time of this video, the app did not install on my Mac as I may have the older Intel and I suspect it will only work on the newer M chips. The Star Vision app is very clean and simple and has the same basic tools found on the Vega. It is a departure from the UI of the past with the XStar and EinScan software. 
The change is a welcoming one as it makes it more beginner friendly. The one criticism I have is that it lacks some of the helpful tools found in the previous apps. I believe that additional features will be added and improved as time progresses, just like they have done in the past in those apps. So this is the first truly wireless 3D scanner from Shining 3D's lineup. And here are my thoughts on it. I think that this opens up whole new use cases for being able to scan anywhere. So think about like 3D gorilla scanning, going to museums, scanning sculptures, uh, being on the street, in nature. You just don't have to be connected to an outlet anymore. All you need is this. Regarding the build quality on this, it feels very premium as you would expect with all Shining 3D products. The Einstar is a plastic body, but it never really bothered me. This has a aluminum metal body. It feels heavier. And while I would want to drop this, it still feels like it could take a hit on a corner or something and be okay. And there's further protection with this uh, rubber body they give you and it has the grip. And speaking of the grip, I have found that there are a couple of ways to hold it, but I found that the best way is to use your middle and ring finger here, pinkies below, and I kind of do like a pinch grip with my pointer finger and thumbs below like this. That feels really secure when I'm scanning something and I can move it around. Even with one hand, it feels very doable. The other thing is to use the tripod on the bottom and use that as a grip to move things around. But this actually with two hands feels way more steady and I'm able to go slower with the scan. So one thing I notice with the on off button is that when you when the device is on and you just tap the button, the screen shuts off, but it's in a sleep mode and it's not fully off. It just stops scanning, turns off the screen. And if you leave it this way, the battery will actually drain all the way. So what you got to do is the long press on the power button, and then it'll give you an option if you want to restart or power down, just power down. One thing I noticed with the scanner is that it is just a really beginner friendly scanner. So if you are new to 3D scanning, the Einstar is at a better price point, which we'll get into in a second, but um, this is easier to use. You turn it on, you're ready to scan, you could process uh, everything on here, and the application itself is really simple to use. And I think they are gearing this as more beginner friendly. So let's talk about the pricing on the Einstar Vega. This is $2,000 compared to the Einstar, which is around $850. Now it's a lot more expensive, but I feel like this is a nice cost to return on what you're getting because if you need to scan portably, like in on location, you're gonna need a laptop if you have the Einstar. If you already have an, uh, a laptop, like a performance laptop, which costs around $2,000, then you're set. Uh, it's probably cheaper to have the, the Einstar then. But if you need to also purchase a laptop, just get this because you hate the scanner and you don't need to have a connected computer. So if you're scanning in location or stuff like that, this is a no-brainer. I would go with this. If you are always sitting at your desk or by a computer, and you're scanning medium to large objects, I think the regular Einstar is better. I'm gonna be doing some more comparison tests between the two scanners later on in other videos, but I think this, because of the other scanning technology it has, it actually scans smaller items uh, with sharper detail. So uh, that's something to consider if what you're scanning is going to be very, very small objects. Uh, and that's why I think this is like a really great buy because it's like two scanners in one for using the two different technologies in the lens. So this is my quick unboxing uh, review of the Einstar Vega and I'll be doing other videos. So this isn't gonna be my final impression on the device. So if you like what you're seeing here and you wanna learn more about the Vega, I'll have more videos coming, about, uh, coming out in the next month or so. So follow along and if you have any questions on the Vega, or you have your own findings, comment below and share with other people. And if you have questions, I will definitely respond. So thanks for watching and peace out.